Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video. While I was uploading the last video that I did, and if you haven't seen that video yet, please do because it's the first in a new series of movie review videos where you get to participate. If you want to learn how you get to participate, then watch that video. In fact, I would love participation from other people as part of this series. Now. As I was uploading, I thought I would check to see what the mail situation was because I'm always expecting packages. Sometimes it's rather dis disappointing. I go out there and check and there's nothing. Sometimes there's a package. Sometimes there are two packages. Sometimes there are three packages. Well, I went out there and shazam! There were five packages. Of course, there could have been three because I'm expecting another three packages. By the way, this is dangerous because sometimes my joints lock up. And sometimes these two fingers come down and the middle one doesn't. And that could be mistaken for something that I'm not intending. Anyway, one of the packages contained laser discs, very special laser discs. In fact, I will be showing them first thing uh, when I do my next Mega Laser Disc Ads video. The other four packages contained video games. Now, the other three packages that I'm waiting on one contains video games, homebrews, in fact. The second package contains laser discs from the Netherlands, and the third package contains a rather special, well special to me, VHD from Japan. Okay, now to get to the video games that uh, I received. Oh, by the way, I went online and found a rather interesting news story that George Lucas has uh, spilled the beans and said that uh, Star Wars Episode 7 was going to feature in the cast Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford. And he said he had always intended for them to be in Star Wars Episode 7 even before Disney got involved, which is kind of strange because um, as he was making the prequel trilogy, he stated that. Um, we're only going to be six Star Wars films, not the nine he originally promised. Well, Disney is in negotiations with Harrison Ford and Gary Fisher and Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill has come out and publicly stated such. Carrie Fisher has said she's going to be in Episode 7. And haven't heard anything about what Harrison Ford has to say about all this. The director has been assigned to Episode 7, J.J. Abrams, who, if you'll remember, directed the reboot for the Star Trek franchise. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. I still say that there'll be a no Star Wars pinball machine because... Stern license, licenses a lot of things for their pinball machines. 24 and CSI and uh, Rolling Stones and Elvis and Indiana Jones based on all four films. <sighs> Tron Legacy and Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean and did I say Rolling Stones? Playboy. I mean, just a ton of, of licenses. And they license a lot of stuff from Disney. And Disney puts these pinball machines in their arcades throughout Walt Disney World. Most of the resorts have an arcade. And there's an arcade inside um, Hollywood Studios, that theme park. And there's a big one in 
the Magic Kingdom, right beside Space Mountain. In fact, if you exit Space Mountain and make a right-hand turn, you, you'll go into the arcade. Well, anyway, I'm getting off the subject here. The Atari games that I picked up, I received the other day. First up, Demons to Diamonds. Requires the paddle controllers. Another Atari original. There's the screenshot. So far, so good. I blame Atari because even back in the day when I bought my VCS, one of the things that irritated me was how difficult it was to get into the packaging without damaging the packaging. Now this game was also released by Sears. The Sears version is identical except has Sears packaging, but it's much more difficult to find and therefore worth more than this version which is common as dirt. Okay, next up. This game is uh, from one of the worst third-party publishers the Atari 2600 ever have had had which is saying something because there were some truly awful third-party publishers on the Atari 2600 Atari had no control over who published games for their system which is one of the things that led to the video game crash of 83 the other being Atari themselves coming out with really horrible games like E.T. the Extraterrestrial and their their Pac-Man uh, port. Anyway, the company I'm talking about is Frogo Games. I hear some of you out there say, no, not Frogo Games. Yes, Frogo Games. Compatible with the video computer system 2600 and 7800. Now, what Atari did, what Frago did, was take games published by others and uh, re release them, generally under a different name. This, however, is not under a different name but they did steal it from a publisher that went under. Look at those graphics. It looks just so real, doesn't it? This is release FG1001. In fact, I think what I'll do. <sighs> Karate. Frago Games. Rarity rating R2 with a minus sign beside it. That meant that the rarity was going down and not up at the time this was published, which was 11 years ago. Back then it was going for $7. Another one of those who ripped off who scenarios. This game is the same as Ultra Vision's Karate. History tells us that Frago's version is the ripoff. We're taking a phone poll of people who like this game. Just call 1-800-DUMBASS. It's been 12 years, still no calls. I wonder if they've had any calls since then. This is 11 years later, so that would be 23 years. It's been 12 years, still no calls. Reminiscent of the Mattel and television game, boxing and that the designers went with large characters and sacrificed detail and color. You're again reminded that the company Frago didn't care much for us video gamers as they took yet another dud, this time from Ultravision, and reissued it. They gave 
the graphics a rating of 1, sound rating of 4, overall a rating of 1. Now, the version released by Ultravision has a rarity rating of R9, with a minus sign beside it. Eleven years ago, it was going for $150, much more uncommon than the Frago version. Comical cover art depicts a karate dude who looks like someone just kicked him in the privates. Same cartridge design as Ultravision's Condor Attack. Now, interestingly, if I go to the... Well, I'll skip the non-U.S. section, which has over 2,000 games in it. Okay, prototypes, non-cartridge items, rumor mail, I somehow passed hunger, which is a uh, rather thick section. Karate Plus, released by Hoser Video. Rarity rating R1, $11. Designed by Chris Rydberg. A graphics hack of Frago's Karate, released in 2002. Those are also released Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings. What's interesting about that is um, well, it says, designed by Adam Thornton, a 4K cart based off of the homebrew title Dark Mage. So you have a homebrew which is based off of another homebrew Page. Designed by Craig Chapman, released by Hoser Video. A text game based, uh, blah, a text game released on both 4K and 8K carts. The 4K was the beta version, the 8K was the final version. Okay. Next up, that was sealed by the way. Another game from Frago Cruise Missile. That doesn't look like a cruise missile, that looks like a flying saucer. But what do I know? Release FG1007. Copyright 1987. That's another one from Frago. Copyright 1987. And when Frago went under it, they still had games in development for the 2600 and for the 7800. Their games for the 7800 were a huge marked improvement over their games for the 2600. Which... Wouldn't have been hard to do. Cruise Missile. Frago. Early rating R2. $7. AKA Exoset. Like most of Frago's games, this title is simply a ripoff of another game, in this case, Exoset. Reads FG1007. Exoset. Panda. Rarity rating R7, $35, aka Cruise Missile. This game was actually designed by Ultravision, but never released. It was then picked up by various cut rate operations. Number 109. Cut rate as in Frago? Okay, next up for the 7800, which is backwards compatible with the Games for the 2600. Barnyard Blaster. New. At least it was new in 1988. The NES had already been out three years by then. For use with Atari light gun. See, I did not know that when I bought it. Oh, well. Atari 
7800. One thing that's happened since this came out is the homebrew section for the 2600 huge in here and there have been a lot of homebrews that have come out since this was published I know because I have some of them but when this was published there were no homebrews for the 7800 and now there are several I know because I have some and I have another one coming okay barnyard doohickeys Pioneer Blaster, Atari, Rarity Rating, R1, Common Mister, uh, worth two dollars. This game can be played, this game can only be played with the Atari XG-1 or compatible light gun. Requires light gun. CX7859. Okay. For the links now, I have quite a sizable collection for the links, including a homebrew. This is not a homebrew. Hydra. Notice the Atari logo on the front there. This is released PA2073, copyright 1992 Tension Incorporated, which was the um, home version, our home division of Atari Games, which was the arcade unit. Uh, Tramiel bought the computer and everything else division, and the arcade division was sold separately, and that's what Tengen came from, was the arcade division. Copyright 1992 Tengen, Copyright 1992 Atari Corporation. links okay hydra 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 atari rarity rating r one one dollar i won't go through the list of people who designed it developed by new fx based on the 1990 atari games coin op Special thanks to Steve Rhino. What did he do? He's not one of the designers. Uh, note the Atari symbol on the boat on the box artwork. While this game was pretty cool in the arcades, this conversion suffers from poor controls to the point where it's almost unplayable. Copyright 1992 Tengen. PA2073. Now, it's really cool. Is there was a game published for the Lynx called Crystal Mines 2. Rarity rating R1. Okay, Songbird Productions has released a number of homebrews for the Lynx and the Jaguar. And in fact, recently um, I got an email from them within the past week or so that five of their Jaguar homebrews are now available once more. They only make up a batch of about 300 per game and if there is enough demand they make up a second batch and that's what they've done. They've come out with a, another batch of 300 for five of their games. And they're not strictly homebrews they are games that had been in development at various developers during the lifespan of the Jaguar and then when the pug, plug the pug, when the plug was pulled on the Jaguar all of these third-party developers ceased developing these games and in many cases they lost the code and so forth and Carl Forehand who runs Songbird Productions did a lot of lead work and he went around and he got permission from various um, third-party publishers for the right to release these games. Some of the cases they said, well, you'll have to find the code first, but if you can find the code, yeah. And he found the code and he released it. In fact, 
he had to do a lot of searching to find the um, boot code for the Jaguar CD. For a while he was putting a bootstrap code on the games that he was releasing on cartridge. Put those in the cartridge slot and then the games that were coming out, homebrew games, from other publishers would boot up. But then he found the code that actually goes on the CD and he put that on there and he has made it freely available so anybody can use the actual code so that it will play in any Jaguar CD if you can find a Jaguar CD that works. Okay. They came out with, Songbird did, Crystal Mines to Buried Treasure. Designed by Ken Beckett, Carl Forehand, developed by Songbird, levels by C. Scott Davis, Carl Forehand, Harry Dodson, Stephen, Ander Stephen, Stephen Anderson, and Dan Lucent. Carl hooked up with designer Ken Beckett, who revealed a hidden feature in the original game to DI new levels through the Comlinks port hooked to a PC. 125 new levels also includes original levels. Songbird titles are available through Songbird Productions. Release uh, CF2008, copyright 2003. This is currently on back order at Songbird, but the reason I bring it up is they are now offering a port for the DS, the Nintendo DS. So that game is called, called uh, simply Crystal Mines and not Crystal Mines 2 Buried Treasure. It features all 125 levels, including the buried ones. Um, they're all included on that DS port, which they have in stock. I believe it was $39.95. The uh, cartridge version for the Lynx is on backwater. I've mentioned this in the past. I get these uh, catalogs every week from oldies.com. I ticked off a whole bunch of different things I'm interested in, so I get one just about every week. I'm leading up to something, trust me on this. Okay, this is the one I got just the other day. Really cool. Out of print, factory sealed VHS tapes. And full moon. Yay, full moon. Plus a section on books and magazines. Anyway, oldies.com, which owns Alpha Video and um, collectibles, records, CDs, all that good stuff. Okay. No knock on the door, so I didn't get my home brews today. Until next time, or at least not yet, stay awesome. And watch my previous video.